Um, as Carrie said, I manage home energy score at the Department of Energy, U.S. Department of Energy, I should say, and I also manage something called the Home Energy Information Accelerator, which is basically a um, collaboration between real estate entities like the National Association of Realtors, um, the Appraisal Institute, um, folks like that, and a number of different communities around the country and efficiency groups, all focused on getting more reliable and useful information about energy use, um, about a home's energy use, I should say, at point of um, sale, so in the transaction and using that in a, in a favorable way. Um, so I'm going to talk to you mostly about home energy score, a little bit about how this all relates to real estate, and I tried to make this presentation of interest to lots of different types of folks. Hopefully it will be useful to you, um, since I know you have a lot of different types of callers who sometimes participate in this series, which is excellent. Okay, so I'm just trying to get my slide to work here. Um, so regardless of which one of these folks you are or somebody else, um, why should you care about residential labeling? And obviously you guys are all calling in to something that's focused on climate because I assume you care about and are concerned about climate change. Um, and that's what I'm concerned about and that's why I work at the Department of Energy. Um, for many, many years now. And one of the ways that we really believe that we can make a difference in reducing uh, carbon and other emissions um, is to focus on our existing housing portfolio, our housing stock. Um, as you probably know, about 20% of the energy in this, in this country um, goes to heating and cooling and uh, providing electricity, et cetera, for our homes. Um, and that's a tremendous amount, particularly since we know that a large number, a large portion of that energy can easily or fairly easily be reduced um, through energy efficiency improvements. And then um, obviously you can also uh, include renewables to make it a cleaner source of energy. Um, so residential labeling is really aimed to getting to us to many different um, uh, benefits. One is obviously addressing emissions, but the others, there's many other benefits like uh, basically improving the comfort of your home, um, reducing your um, energy costs, making your home more affordable, and then hopefully also adding value to your home when you're ready to sell it. And so the reason we got into residential labeling is that we realized that people were, you know, either putting money into improving their homes and not getting credit for it, or more likely not putting money into improving their homes for energy efficiency purposes and therefore not getting credit for it because there was nothing done. Um, we know that the vast majority of homes in this country could benefit from energy retrofits, yet people don't do it. And there are a lot of reasons people don't do it because it's a hassle. You don't always want contractors coming into your house. Um, people don't know what to do. They think that you know just replacing one appliance with Energy Star is really going to make a difference. And it makes some difference, but it really doesn't make um, the kind of difference you can if you look at the whole home and what you need to do in terms of insulation and air sealing and all that stuff. So we wanted to give people useful information that they could act on uh, for a variety of reasons, whether it's to make the home more comfortable, uh, less costly to run, or because they wanted to do something helpful to the environment, or for all of those reasons. So homeowners and sellers, you know, obviously want to get credit for their investments. You go, you hear frequently people say, and there's even, even TV shows about this, you know, what's the bang for your buck? What, what am I going to get in terms of my return on my investment? Um, and, you know, it sometimes helps you feel okay about spending a lot of money to redo your kitchen or your bathroom, but it turns out that you really can get a return on investment from making uh, efficiency improvements if the people that are buying your house actually know what you did. Um, and buyers really want to know what they're getting. So um, whether it's obviously you wouldn't buy a house without knowing what the property taxes are going to be or the insurance, obviously your mortgage, interest payments, all that makes big uh, factors into you know the house you're going to buy. Um, but it also, for some reason, we just kind of ignore the fact that you have this monthly cost that can be quite substantial depending on where you live and, and how much your energy bills are going to run. So we think it's useful information that can be used to encourage retrofits and, again, capture the value of energy performance at point of sale. And all of these different players, whether you're a utility, a contractor, state, state, cities and states, Home inspectors, um, you can read these uh, these little uh, circles here around the, the middle, which is the reliable energy data. 
Um, all of them can use this data um, in a fruitful way uh, if we kind of set up the right mechanisms to do that. So one of the ways to get useful, reliable information about a home's energy performance is to get a home energy score. And DOE developed this about eight years ago um, to be to serve like a miles per gallon type of rating for homes, and primarily for existing homes because there's already um, there was already another rating system out there, the HERS rating, the Home Energy Rating System Index, sorry, um, and that was widely used and is widely used on new homes um, because it's it's a way that compares it compares a home to code. So let's say you build a home today, it'll tell you how much better you are than the energy code that was in existence or was put in place in 2006. So if you're 30% better than energy code for that house, you'd get a 70, which is 30% less than 100. 100 is kind of your baseline with that type of scoring. So home energy score doesn't compare you to code because a lot of homes were built before 2006. Um, and we also just wanted to look at what was the actual absolute amount of energy that home was going to use, regardless of whether it was better than or worse than code, how much energy is going to be used to heat and cool that house and provide hot water, et cetera. So that's what we developed. We developed a low cost method to understand that. And basically what it does is it runs an energy model, a standard um, calculation tool to calculate how much energy you're going to use in an average year, you know, regardless of where you're living in the country. So in Connecticut, if you're living in Hartford, it would tie to the local weather station for Hartford and it would say, okay, in an average year in Hartford, it's going to cost, uh, the weather's going to be, you know, whatever the pattern is for the 365 days. It will run it assuming that average weather pattern and it will also assume that you have like an average family with average um, occupancy patterns um, living there. Um, we've done a tremendous amount of analysis to make sure that this um, tool is accurate and reliable, and we tried to make it as simple as possible, not only to use, but to also understand. So it could be affordable, usable, actionable, if you get the score, et cetera. So the way the score is calculated, I've already kind of explained some of this, is if you don't look at bills, you're not looking at, you know, what the occupancy behavior is, you know, if you have a very large family living there, or you have a senior who, you know, lives in some other part of the country half the year, it, it doesn't matter. It's just looking at that house, regardless of who's going to live there or who is living there. And it's saying, okay, what's the age of this house? Um, what kind of structure is it? Uh, what kind of walls does it have? Um, the size, the condition square footage. And then it looks at the major heating and cooling systems, uh, including hot water. Um, and it looks at how much insulation, if you can't see in the walls, we give you, uh, we give the assessor guidance about how much insulation is likely in there. Um, they do go into the attic and check that out. So basically, what's the structure of the house? How much insulation and air sealing and duct sealing has been done in the house? And then what is its heating, cooling, and water heating um, equipment? It looks at those features. And then it'll rate the home from one to 10. If it's on the lower end, it's using more energy than average. And if it's above a five, it's going to use less energy than average for that area. So obviously in San Diego to heat and cool a home, it's gonna use a lot less energy than it is in um, someplace in Connecticut. But compared to the other homes in Connecticut, if you get a five, it would be about average for that area. Obviously, if you have a lot of, I don't think Connecticut has, maybe I'm wrong, has so many different climates, but like if you're in Maine or something where you're at the top of a mountain, it's going to be different than if you're by the coast. Um, and we take that into account. And feel free, as Carrie said, to, I'm not sure you can be unmuted that easily, but you could certainly write in your questions and I'm happy to answer them um, as we go or at the end. Um, so what the tool will generate is a score from one to 10, but it'll also tell you how much we predict that bill to be for an average weather year in that location and with average occupants, meaning that they're setting their thermostats at what we believe to be kind of a common um, set of uh, set points uh, for that, you know, for 
to be comfortable, basically. Um, and then it'll also tell you how much you could reduce that energy use and how much you could save if you made uh, recommended improvements. Um, and the, the typical report that you get can look like this, or the front page might look a little different. It's kind of up to the person who's generating it to decide which one they want to provide. But um, this one's showing you more information. Sometimes it's really just most of that top third of the page there, which is the score, the updated score, and you know how much you could save with those improvements. And then you always get this additional set of home facts, which is several pages long. I'm only showing you one page here. And that's you know, the information that the assessor, that's what we call the person who walks through the house, the information that they collected. So if you are concerned that they did something wrong, you can see um, what they put in or a contractor could see it. Um, and I should say, I guess I didn't put it on here, but there's another part of the home score report, which is the recommendations. And so in this case, it's saying that this person can, you know, save about $900. Um, and it tells them specifically what they can do to make those, to get to that saving. So some of the things will be, you know, put more insulation in your attic or seal your ducts. Other things might be when you're ready to replace your um, heating or cooling system, if you replace it with an Energy Star rated system, compared to the one you have today, this is how much you'd save. So that's what it's it's doing. And it's only giving recommendations for things that will pay off in 10 years or less. That's not true of the ones where it's saying if you replace your equipment, because we kind of assume people may or may not, you know, want to uh, replace their equipment early. So we just tell you how much you would save overall. Um, and then just to tell you what's happened over the last several years, and much of this has happened in just the last couple of years, um, is that partners across the country, and we have outstanding partners in uh, the state of Connecticut. Um, the state has done a great job, and then your utilities have done a tremendous job of providing scores to homeowners across the state. Um, so 75,000 nationwide so far. Um, we have 500 assessors, and that means that they are specifically qualified to go and collect this information in a house, um, and that means that they understand it you know, precisely what kind of information we want and how to measure it. It's not complicated, but you really want everybody to be doing it the same way, basically, so that you get the same answers. Um, and then state and local adoption, we're excited that Berkeley, California and Portland, now Oregon now require the score either at time of sale or listing. Um, Oregon's is just being started in January uh, of 2018. New York City has introduced legislation and others are in the process of considering that kind of um, effort. But many, many places, you know, are not going to mandate it and they're just going to consider this, you know, as something voluntary that they're trying to encourage in their communities. A number of states like yours have um, something in place that, you know, put, puts an emphasis on getting these kind of scores and also on getting her scores for new homes um, frequently. We've done some work with FHA, the Federal Housing Administration, out of HUD, out of the Housing and Urban Development Department. Um, <clears throat> and they, uh, I will talk about this later, they have some financing uh, incentives. But we're also excited now to reach out to the training entities that talk to home buyers and homeowners around the country. Um, and so we have a webinar for them coming up right after Thanksgiving. We've also been doing outreach to realtors and homeowners, home buyers. Um, that's because originally we really were just doing this through utilities, but in the last couple of years we've started to uh, train home inspectors, and this is basically as we became better at understanding, you know, what we need to do to do the training and improve our training system, et cetera. Uh, we basically branched out be beyond utilities, and that's uh, why we're now reaching out to, to realtors. Um, this is really more for if anybody's with a city, state, a utility. Well, in the case of Connecticut, you already have your utility signed up, so I'm assuming it's not. But um, or a nonprofit um, who wants to sign up as a partner. The partner requirements are basically that you know they figure out what an implementation plan is going to be. Um, they have to complete 500 scores or more a year, and they have to um, 
uh, commit to doing 5% rescore of homes through quality insurance assurance. And then they participate and you know, work with us overall. We give them access to marketing materials should they want to use them, et cetera. Oh, and one more thing that's kind of important is that cities in particular are sometimes interested in this piece here, which is that let's say you're a city or a nonprofit or whatever. Um, you can either use our tool directly or you can use it um, via a web service. Well, I can go into that later, but um, through another tool that you, you know, a proprietary tool that you're using or et cetera, um, as long as the data flows into our calculation tool uh, correctly, it can be done that way as well. Regardless of how you do it, you would receive all the data for the homes that are scored um, under your partnership. So that can be useful in terms of understanding your housing stock, et cetera. And I guess, again, I think a, a number of cities and states are interested in it for that purpose, not just for um, getting the scores, but to understand where they might want to, you know, increase policy to improve various um, parts of their housing stock. So um, I've already mentioned that city and states um, use this through policy, um, but there's also utilities like yours, um, Eversource and United Illuminating um, have done a great job of uh, introducing this through their home energy solutions program. Um, and we have a number of different utilities around the country that are doing it either through home performance with Energy Star um, or other types of rebate, et cetera, programs. Um, we do offer free training and testing. Um, you can't use our tool either directly or indirectly unless you pass our test. Um, it is free, but it is a little tricky to pass. Um, but uh, again, your utilities have done a great job of getting many, many people trained to do this. Um, and as I said before, the reason it's a little bit tricky is that we really want people to um, calculate and, and uh, collect the data consistently. So let's say you see insulation in an attic and it's you know, six inches deep, that can translate into an R factor, but if it's done um, poorly versus well in terms of how it was installed, if there's a lot of gaps, you know, that's not really ideal for insulation, you have to derate it. So basically we give tips on how that would be done consistently um, regardless of which uh, assessor is going through the house. Um, and then just recently we've started trying out what we're calling remote quality assurance and mentoring. Um, you can do this or the partner can do it still directly where they send somebody else through the house. But the reason we were getting into this is that we realized that this is still kind of a basic assessment for the house. And so we have to keep the costs relatively low um, and we don't charge anything for it, but obviously the utility or the person going through your house is gonna charge. Um, so to reduce the cost for them, we were trying to find other ways that they could meet the QA requirements. So in some cases, a home inspector who's already taking pictures of a house will take a few extra pictures that we require now if they want to do it this way. They'll upload those pictures to um, another entity that's qualified to review them. That entity will rescore the house looking at the pictures independently and then uh, get back to them on whether or not there were errors, et cetera. Um, so it's just another way to, to do this. And virtual mentoring just means that um, if I wanted to be an assessor and I, the first house that you score has to be mentored by somebody who has had more experience. Um, so if I wanted to be an assessor, I could even go through my own home and take pictures or do a you know GoPro or whatever and talk to my mentor over the phone while they tell me, oh yeah, this you know this is how you would you know uh, measure this or or that part of the house, et cetera, or that feature. Um, what I was saying earlier about you don't have to use our tool directly, you can go into our website and an assessor who's qualified can enter all the data there directly. Or if you're like, um, your utilities have um, their own platform, which I'm now forgetting what it's called, but it's for their home energy solutions um, <clears throat> uh, program. And basically a lot of different tools now connect to home energy score via what's called an API, which is just basically a way to control data exchange from one program to another. And so you don't have to you know, use our tool directly. You can do it this way, but you'll still get the same answer. So that's basically the idea there. Um, we're not trying to get in the way of um, you know, what 
people in the market do in terms of developing software since they do it much better than we do. We're really just trying to control the, the calculation piece of this. So you get a consistent answer. Um, we realize that not very many people have heard of the score, so we've been trying to work with our partners to uh, do some coordinated media campaigns. Um, you know, the U.S. Department of Energy does not spend money on media particularly, so it's really just what we can do at a very low cost and then hope that some of our partners can also get the word out on their own. And again, folks are welcome to use um, our materials. We develop them and then you can do what you like with them if you're a partner. Um, as I said, we've been reaching out and doing more training of home inspectors and therefore doing more with realtors as well. Uh, I mentioned the upcoming home buyer counseling on the 30th. Um, and we've also developed a, a module. It's really just a, a PowerPoint presentation, but that NAR, the National Association of Realtors, their trainers can use and integrate into their, I believe they have a two-day training course for what they call green designees or green realtor designees. Um, for that, they would include this module. I mean, we can't obviously require it, but if they're interested, they can include it um, in what they're putting out there to uh, realtors. So if a realtor comes across this, they'll know what, how to explain it to their client. Um, I didn't speak too much about the Home Energy Information Accelerator at the beginning. I mentioned that we had this partnership going on. Um, it's been very effective, actually, because I think it's really improved our relationship with folks like the National Association of Realtors, the Appraisal Institute. We really started to understand the needs of those entities, and I think they understood what our goals are, so it's really helped. And then we've had great um, success, or I should say it's, it's we're getting to great success with a number of different entities around the country. In the Northeast, it's the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnership, which some of you guys have probably heard of. Um, and they're working with the state of Connecticut, but also a number of other states to figure out how to build um, a green building registry. And what that means, it's really more like getting back to this thing at the beginning here that I, sorry to flip through these all, but if you had a reliable set of energy here in the middle, um, whether it's coming from utilities or home inspectors, then you could push it out to these different entities that could use it. So lenders could take it into account when they're um, you know, potentially giving incentives and appraisers could take it into account when they're appraising the home. So what these different entities are doing is they're pulling all, they're coming up with mechanisms, IT mechanisms to pull data from various sources into this registry. And it's not, unfortunately, it's not a simple process because you have to deal with, you know, is the data has, you know, is its entity willing to provide the data? Can they provide the data? And then uh, what data is going to go to the multiple listing services, et cetera, things like that. And what format should you have and specifications and all this junk. Um, but it's also not just getting the score, which would be, you know, relatively simple. It's also getting things like the HERS score as well, or if a home is Energy Star or LEED certified. Um, there's a lot of different things out there. What we're really trying to provide with the Home Energy Score is a relatively low cost but reliable way of getting this information. But there's lots of other things you can do if you've done like a great job in your house and you want to get credit for that and it meets some other designation or threshold, you can still obviously do that as well. Okay, so getting back to where I was here. Um, so folks, as I said, like NEEP, the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnership, but also in, in Portland, the city of Portland is doing it in Oregon. We have Build It Green in California. They're all building similar types of these registries which could push or pull data um, as needed. So you wouldn't have to go you know, digging through papers to figure out when you're ready to sell your house, what's going on. Um, one of the products that came out of that accelerator was um, this thing that I have a little picture of here, the Home Energy Information Guide. And this is really intended for multiple listing services and for realtors, but I think it's still, regardless of whether those folks are on the phone today, I think it's helpful to kind of explain to lots of different folks because it can get really confusing, um, the fact that you have Home Energy Score and HERS and all these different labels. So we divided it up into three areas. You can have a green certification, what we call an energy label, 
or you can have verified energy improvements. So green certification is more like a stamp of achievement. So you have USDA organic meat or whatever it is, the product that's USDA organic, it's met some criteria and it's achieved a standard. Same thing would be if it was Energy Star or LEED. Those are two that people are probably familiar with. An energy label is more like the nutrition facts you see on all your the products we buy. And so it tells you how many calories are in this, you know, what's the breakdown in terms of fat and cholesterol and I mean whatever, fat and carbs, etc. So if you get a home energy score or a HER score, it's giving you a number from one to ten or one to a hundred or whatever, but it's also telling you how much energy that home is likely going to use. You can get that number. So even if you had a lead or energy star building up here, you could still get a standard calculation of how much energy it was going to use by using one of those tools. And then verified energy improvements, which you sometimes get if you do like a home performance with Energy Star program, or you talk to a contractor and they give you a list of different improvements they've made. As long as they're verified, they can also go into the MLS. Um, and it's more like saying, okay, I've reduced fat in this product. So um, it may still have a lot of fat in it, but it's 40% less fat than before. So, you know, somebody might have done a lot and improved their home by 30% energy efficiency, and that's awesome. Um, it might still be a very large house that uses a lot of energy, and you can figure that out with the energy label. But it's using a lot less than it did before, so it's still getting credit for that. But this is the number that you get out of the energy label that would be helping you compare any home because you're just looking at how much it's gonna to cost to run that house. Um, there are a number of different products, or not a number, but there are a couple of different products that are out there that do provide incentives linked to the score. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here because I'm worried that I'm maybe running out of time, um, but uh, suffice it to say that there's um, a couple of products that are not widely used yet, and you guys also have a great Connecticut Green Bank which also ties to the score, which is great. Um, I do hope that the incentives that are associated with some of our lending institutions will increase substantially over the next few years, and we're starting to work on pilots that um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are are um, are planning out right now. Sorry, I heard a noise. Um, so just to kind of conclude here, the value proposition to lots of different stakeholders, as I, as I said, I wasn't sure who was calling in today, but Basically, you can better serve customers um, regardless of where you fit in here, and consumers can get uh, get and capture the value of their upgrades. Um, if you're interested in promoting efficiency, obviously it's a good way to do that, getting a reliable estimate of utility costs. It is a low-cost assessment. As I said, it will give you tailored recommendations, which is great, but also the contractor can override those recommendations and give you other ones if they want, but the score that you see as an upgrade score would be associated with whatever recommendations they're giving you. So that's good. Um, I said, as I said, some cities and states and utilities like the standard data collection and then better understanding because of that of your housing stock. There are a few things that are still kind of, I think, getting in the way of having a really effective well-oiled machine here in terms of home energy data getting into all the different things we saw on that first slide with the circles. Um, one of them is privacy and data issues. There's still some market confusion, and we still do have limited access to financing. Another one that I'm just going to briefly mention uh, is these automated energy models. So if you go on Redfin today and look up your house, it will likely have an estimate of how much energy it's going to use and how, what that cost is going to be. Unfortunately, some of these models are really good, but they don't have good data going into them because they're just taking property records, basically. Um, and so they're very unreliable. We are beginning an analysis. Rocky Mountain Institute is using our data to compare what's coming out of these various tools. So I hope we'll have something for people to have a better understanding of what they can rely on there. And it's not that we don't like the idea of having something quick and easy that you could get in Redfin or Zillow or wherever, but we really don't want people to get information that's then going to make them even more confused about what they're getting. So we're looking at ways that potentially you could do a remote assessment and it would tell you how, how much energy that house is gonna use, but we're not there yet. 
um, we're trying to reduce confusion by coming up with just a standard, like everybody using the same tool to come up with the energy estimate. And obviously I already mentioned that we're trying to do more with financing. Um, again, just to end here, I think, you know, there's a lot of potential to uh, reducing our, our dependence on energy um, uh, and fossil fuels um, by working on energy efficiency. And this recent study that came out of MIT found that if you, you know, can start to have more effective codes and enforce them, you can reduce your emissions by 6% by 2030 for the new homes, but you could get another 19% if you actually actively retrofit the existing homes, which is, is impressive. And here's our website and an email address if you're interested in contacting us. Thank you so much for your time. Great, Joan, that was wonderful. A lot of really excellent content. Uh, so I'm actually gonna hold off on the questions uh, until we have Julia present uh, so that we don't have overlap in, in questions she might be able to answer a few. So we'll go ahead and roll right into Julia. Oh, I think there your screen down at the bottom. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Julia Domain. I'm a research analyst here at the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And I'm going to be talking today about Connecticut's implementation of the DOE Home Energy Score um, and how we're using it to build an energy efficiency, um, a sustainable energy efficient market in Connecticut um, through real, the real estate transaction process. Um, so as many of you I'm sure know, um, the Connecticut Energy Efficiency Fund supports our um, ratepayer funded initiative Energize Connecticut, um, which empowers Connecticut's residents and businesses to make smarter energy choices um, and to advance the uh, use of energy efficiency, thus um, reducing pollution and producing economic development um, and energy security. Um, so what we're really looking for, though, in terms of a future state vision is a sustainable um, energy efficient market that's really driven by um, consumer demand starting at the real estate transaction process and not and moving away from um, subsidization and just looking for home buyers and home sellers to expect energy, like Joan was saying before, to expect home energy efficiency when they go to buy a home um, and really know what questions to ask and look for um, when these things can often be more considered invisible features of a home. Um, and so, I mean, this really integrates the entire real estate transaction process, um, starting with assessments and making sure that um, energy investments are valued, um, and then transitioning that through um, uh, labeling um, information databases like the Helix program, which Joan uh, mentioned earlier through the Northeast Energy Par um, Efficiency Partnership. Um, and so this is what we're looking to move towards. Um, so in Connecticut, one way that we're really starting to approach this is we have a very old um, housing stock that is primarily oil heated. And so we have a statutory goal of weatherizing 80% of our homes by 2030. Um, and so what we would like to see is that people really expect that their homes are efficient and weatherized um, across the state. Um, so we're today, I mean, we're looking at achieving this goal, um, and the way that we're doing this is through um, Connecticut's Energize, Conne or Conne Energize Connecticut's Home Energy Solutions Program, which is our version of the um, Home Performance of Energy Star. And this provides um, direct install energy efficiency measures, um, primarily in single family units. Um, and it, this is a comprehensive energy assessment, uh, and it's at a low uh, cost. So it's about $1,000 of services for $149. Um, and so one of the key points or uh, things that's provided with this program is that um, a BPI certified technician will go through and address all of these different opportunities you might have to improve your energy efficiency. Um, and they also provide you with a home energy score. And so this is what Joan just presented on. Um, and right now we're looking at since about um, early 2015, we have um, scored over 25,000 homes, which is great. Um, and this is now a feature in all HES assessments um, for qualifying homes. 
And so um, all of our HES lead technicians are also required to be assessors, and so we have more than 200 active assessors right now, which is great. Um, and so um, how we're engaging with the real estate industry to move this forward right now, um, we have started preliminary discussions with the local MLSs and our local realtor associations. We've been um, just meeting with a couple of them so far to start the conversations and get them educated on this, um, on these programs and, you know, interested in really integrating them. And um, so some of the key things that need to be considered, particularly for Connecticut, is that we are not mandating scores. Um, this is a completely voluntary program and it's meant to be used if, to however um, the customer wants. If they have a good score and they feel like they want to promote that when they go to sell their home, that's great. Um, but if not, there's no mandate. So that's a really important thing to remember. Um, we also have had a lot of discussion about quality assurance and consistency in our programs. Um, you know, all of the uh, home energy solutions contractors um, are closely monitored and um, work closely with the utilities to make sure that they are providing consistent results um, and that there's really no way to, you know, fib any of the data. So. Um, then we're also looking at um, different strategies for data sharing and what the consequences or anything that uh, might be might jeopardize customer information could be. So um, the utilities are closely watching um, for that. And then we're one of the um, major things that we really need to move on is educating the industry and making sure that realtors, um, assessors, uh, you know, the whole listing agents know about this information and how to um, convey it and what its real value is. Um, so right now, we're working on this Helix program, the Home Energy Labeling Information Exchange um, with NEEP. Um, Connecticut's looking at being a, becoming a beta testing site, um, which is really exciting. So they're moving towards the, it's a three-year, um, this is a three-year program in the development process and we're looking at towards the end of the second year and really starting to kick off this beta testing um, portion of it. And uh, like I said before, protection of customer data is really a primary concern for the state and the utilities. But, um, so before we can move on that, some short term action items um, are including, we're looking at um, opt-in um, and opt-out language during the home energy solutions assessment so that customers can um, consent to sharing their data with third party um, entities so that information about their energy efficiency use, their home energy score, things like that can go into the Helix platform which can get translated over to the different MLSs and ultimately end up on different listing sites so that they can really market their um, investments. And then um, this is, we are also looking at different, um, wh who is allowed to access this data? You know, is it MLS who, who is allowed to go into um, Helix and see what this data is? So we're looking carefully at these and considering um, the costs and benefits and um, are looking forward to moving forward on these things. Um, and then finally, um, we're, the next steps also include further industry engagement, um, which really includes um, bringing up, you know, working more with the MLS, making sure that they're on board with this and the smart MLS, um, more local realtor outreach. We're working with the Green Bank um, to create a sort of, um, you know, on the go educational program and hopefully being able to do more educational workshops um, to engage as many people as possible. Um, Energize Connecticut is also working on building out some um, web pages on their website about uh, that provides information to both home buyers and home sellers, um, you know, questions to ask your realtor about when you're looking for a home, um, for, an, for a new home that's energy efficient, like what kind of fuel does the home use? Um, you know, does it have a score? If it hasn't been scored, can it get scored before I, you know, move forward on um, purchasing? And then in terms of selling, there's a lot of uh, good information about how to further market your investments and really get, maximize your return. Um, and then we're going to, you know, try and create a page for realtors that has um, resources for them that they can either give to their um, 
their clients or, um, you know, uh, provide just better information and access for their customers. And then, um, obviously, continuing to label as many homes as possible and um, encourage customers to want to share their information. Um, so this is what Connecticut is looking forward to in the future. Um, we think that this is a great driver for energy efficiency going forward, and um, it will really help to build a classic supply-demand market. Great. Thank you, Julia. That was an excellent presentation as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up to questions. So if you do have questions, we have had a few that have been sent in. So we'll start. We'll stop. Start there, um, and then uh, uh, we'll. Sorry, we're just doing technical. Actually, go ahead and just keep your screen. Oh, okay. Um, so if you have a question, please send it in, and uh, we will uh, put them forward. So I'll just start with the the first one that we have. Um, if I've had a home energy score previously. Um, and before the home energy, uh, before the home energy, sorry, if I've had a home energy solutions audit previously, before the home energy score was in place, how can I get one? This is to Julie, I would imagine. Um, so you can request them through. Um, there are BPI certified assessors, and I think Joan um, shared. Uh, a link before where you can find an assessor and get one. You also, depending on how long ago it was, there I believe you can get um, a, you can have a home energy solutions um, a, a assessment done again. Um, I believe, but this is a, this is a good question. So something we can maybe follow up on. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Great. So contact us if this is something you're interested in and uh, would like to to find out what the opportunities are. Um, okay, so another question that we have, um, I think this would probably be for Joan. How does this rating system work with lead homes? Do you see it as a competitive system or do they align well? I think they align really well, and I'm not just saying that, but because I, I actually just met with um, U.S. Green Building Council, I think last month, and they're really excited about this idea that we'd come up with one metric, which is like either dollars or um, energy in BTUs or whatever, so it's you know, combining your electricity and your gas and all that, um, they would like one underlying metric that could come out of any uh, system. So whether you're getting LEED or Energy Star or HERS or Home Energy Score or whatever, they'd all feed into one calculation tool that, you know, hopefully would be managed by the Department of Energy. And we've been talking to the different software providers who do HERS ratings, and I think there's definitely some interest there it would be done through our National Renewable Energy Lab. And would, we'd, prop, we'd have to move our system, Home Energy Score, also to this new calculator. But it, it's not that it would change very much. It's just that the thing that would change is that everybody would be getting it based on the same assumptions and um, the same energy model. Uh, basically, the physics is still the same in terms of the energy model. And we did a comparison of what the energy estimates would be kind of Home Energy Score versus if we change to this other model and there's very little difference the the problem is just that if you get a home a hers rating or you get some other estimate that comes out of somewhere else they're not necessarily all using the same set points and assumptions and weather and all of that and it can really mess things up so you're not even if they're all pretty good tools you're not going to get the same answer so the idea would be that you'd have one place to get an energy estimate, but then you'd still be able to get a lead, you know, certification, et cetera. Great. Um, a couple more questions on uh, reporting to, to a realtor. So if I sell my house, um, can I give my score to my realtor and ask them to list it? That's part one. And then part two would be if I get a bad energy score uh, in, in a state that requires uh, I think it, you showed Oregon and Washington require it, maybe California. Um, if I get a bad energy score, how do I change it? This is for me or for Julia? I think this is probably for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I remember the second part now. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was two easy questions. I should remember them. Okay. The first one was, oh, can if you I, repeat I, the first one? If I want to sell my house and... and oh. Oh yeah, you can definitely give you can give the report to your realtor, and as long as okay. So unfortunately, there's I think over 700 multiple listing services in the country, so um, they're not all the same. And I don't remember how many are in Connecticut, but I think you guys don't have too many, luckily. 
Uh, so as long as your multiple listing service has a place for you to put the information in, and that's kind of what that home energy information guide was about that I showed briefly, is to get them, there's this organization called the Real Estate Standards Organization, which creates standards for those different MLSs. And so if they abide by the standards, they'll all be using the same information if it's there. So you can give it to them. And even if it wasn't in the multiple listing service, you could obviously still print out the report and make it part of the package that they give to people. Now, if you didn't like your score, a couple things. One is um, you can improve your score and um, by doing the various things that would make sense in terms of energy efficiency. And let's say you have a really large house uh, and you've already done a lot to make it efficient, but it's still using a fair amount of energy because it's big. Um, you can also put PV on and uh, photovoltaic solar on your roof, and that can improve your score as well. We just added photovoltaics to the way it's calculated. So if you have them, you can get credit for them. Um, and then lastly, I would say that, you know, my home actually doesn't score very well. Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit what it scores. So um, it's, I live in a really old house with a brick um, uh, facade. All of it is brick. And there's no, it's very hard to add insulation. Now, I might still add insulation at some point, but I haven't yet. And when we built on other parts of it, we improved that part and I did what I could to make it more efficient. It's not that, you know, every house is necessarily going to be the most efficient, but what this does is tell people what their opportunities are. And if somebody falls in love with a house that's not efficient, they have, you know, they have choices. They can live with that and drive less, <laughs> walk more, and do other things that they can do. They can still try to improve that home. It's not that homes can't be improved. There's obviously a cost, and so you've got to figure out whether that cost is worth it to you. Um, and when it makes when it doesn't, not every house has to be a 10. Um, you could do that. I think every house in the country could be a 10 if you put enough EV on and made it as efficient as possible, but it doesn't necessarily make sense. It's just to give you an idea of how much that house is going to cost to run and then an idea of how you can make it as efficient as possible given your what you're interested in doing. Great. Um, I think this question can go to either Julia or uh, Joan. Um, can I request a home energy score uh, be completed when buying a home? And is this something that you're seeing uh, more uh, potential home buyers request? Um, do you want to take Julia or you want me to? Sure, I can talk about this a little bit. Um, so one sure. thing that we're trying to encourage is um, that maybe one day uh, Realtors can offer this as a promotional item to their clients. Um, this is something that you can, if you really want to know more information about, um, once a home, uh, when you're looking at homes, sure, if you have a communication with the home seller, you, I don't see any reason why you couldn't um, ask for them to look into getting one of these things. I mean, like I said before, the cost of the um, Home Energy uh, Solutions Program, which provides the Home Energy Score in Connecticut, is $149. Um, and if that is something that encourages the sale or help makes it easier for you to buy, um, this is something that you would have to talk about with your realtor. And um, yeah, but I, I, I think that's totally reasonable. Do you have anything to add to that, Joan? Um, just to say that, I mean, you guys are really lucky in Connecticut that you have the Home Energy Solutions Program because you're not just getting a score, you're getting other improvements that the utilities are offering with that, which is outstanding. Um, but if you, you know, were ready to sell your home and you didn't have time to do that or whatever, um, a home inspector can get trained and qualified to do this online. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time talking about that, but it's basically this program that you go through, it'll take them about eight hours to get trained and to take the test if they're focused. Um, I've heard one person did it in four hours, but that's kind of unusual. Um, so we have home inspectors around the country now who are getting trained and who are doing that, um, but you're lucky to have your utilities offer this as well, so you can do it either way. And there was that find an assessor page, which I forgot to mention, it was on one of my slides, but you can go to that. Unfortunately, we don't have too many assessors yet who are independently doing this. In Connecticut, you have a lot, but they're from the utilities, which is which is outstanding. Okay, um, and then 
I think this is our last question. Oh, what? maybe we have some more coming in. Um, but in states that mandate uh, mandate this program, are you able to gauge um, through a survey or some other way the role the home energy score uh, plays in, in people's purchasing of a home? Um, that's an outstanding question, and I wish I had an answer to it. But um, because the Portland uh, ordinance is just going into effect this coming January, we don't have data on that yet, but I think we will be doing probably a pilot with them, hopefully with Fannie Mae. And so there will be an effort to collect that data um, along with a lot of other stuff. Uh, and then in Berkeley, they've had it longer, but they're just not that many houses. And so I, I don't know if they've, I mean, we don't, we don't have the resources to do a lot of additional analysis. We encourage our partners to do that. Um, and we have done some studies to look at, you know, whether it increases uptake of efficiency improvements, because obviously that's what Department of Energy is interested in. We're not interested in just getting people to score houses. We're interested in getting them to know what to do and then take action because they believe it's a good thing to do and that they'll get credit for it. So I honestly believe that getting to this single metric and getting to um, pushing Fannie and Freddie in a direction that would uh, make energy information a very useful and um, taken into account at point of sale with loans would be a huge step forward. I think that would drive the market, but we're not quite there yet. And the two ways that they're looking at doing that is to either give more money at time of sale for you to make the improvements, I mean time of purchase, I'm sorry. So if you're buying a house, you might be able to get a higher loan if you you know, say, okay, I'm going to get it from a three to a seven or whatever, or, or they could use other means as well. Um, and then you can use that money to basically an escrow to make the improvements in the first three months or six months or whatever. And then the other way that we're encouraging them to do it, but I think they're a little more reluctant to do this, is to say, okay, if this house is going to cost, you know, $500 um, less to run than average, I should get credit for that in the appraised value or in my monthly payments. And so in the assessment of what my monthly payments are gonna be, um, there's different ways you could do that. And so we're trying to encourage them to do both of those. Okay, we have one last question. Uh, so this is from Eric Ribbon, who was a, a previous uh, presenter here on the on our webinar series, series and runs a community college program for energy management. And he's asking what kind of video training resources are there currently for students studying energy efficiency who intend to go into the industry? I mean, we have our, um, I'm happy to talk with you if you wanna contact me. Um, they can definitely take our online training and you at a community college could offer, a few of our partners offer what they call like boot camp, where they do it in a, in a day so that they help people who are not as familiar with uh, online training to get them through it and answer questions and know what to do. Um, and then they sometimes even take them through a local house to score it so that they can get their mentoring in person done. Um, that Those are the resources we have. Um, I don't know if you have anything else, Julia, that you wanted to add? Great, great, it would be good to connect you with Eric. Uh, so that's all the questions that I have. Um, thank you to both Julia and Joan. I think that was a really excellent presentation. Uh, we do have a couple questions on uh, access to the slides. So we will post the slides on our website um, and, and someone asked about a recording. Um, we're working through the logistics of the new software to get it posted on our website. So if you would like a, a, a a recording, um, I suggest you contact us directly at the Climate Change Office um, on the Climate Change website. You can get our email address um, and we'll, we'll uh, do our best to get you a copy of the recording as well. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll go ahead and tee up the next webinar, which is scheduled for December 15th. Uh, we'll be sending out the announcement on it shortly. It's a local action, statewide impact, uh, and it will be uh, about the launch of a new municipal sustainability program. So if you're interested in learning about that, please tune in on December 15th at noon. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much.